Brussels and Donegal. And we'll find out what an internet blog is and why so many Irish people want them. We'll see you in a bit. We have Sinead Gleeson, Simon McGar and Una Mullally, all very welcome. Sinead, what's a blog? Uh, Enlighten us. Well, a blog is, is whatever you want to be in a lot of ways. And it's been, it's been erroneously called uh, an online diary, which kind of does a great disservice to what blogs are. Essentially, they're a personal space online. And it's a forum, a platform, if you like, for self-publishing, which you can edit yourself. So it basically gives you access to a very big audience, and you can blog about whatever you like. So it's it's basically a platform for soapboxing, I would say. Well, it's a, so it's a personal soapbox on the net yeah. that anybody can have a look at. You can put up your thoughts, your loves, your hates, your watch into your Absolutely. Interesting. I mean, if, if you only have to look at the range of nominees and the categories in the blog awards, you're talking about political blogs, sporting blogs, cultural blogs, photo blogs, video blogs. Um, basically, if there's something you're interested in and you want to t a, 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 an audience on the web, uh, a blogging is kind of a, a really big option for you to, to, to look at. Are they easy to set up? Is it a difficult thing to get involved in? It's very easy and it's something that whenever I talk about blogging I try and impart to people because there is a kind of technology fear and mm -hmm. that you're very geeky uh, mm -hmm. and that, you know, that you're, you also need to know about code or technology. You really don't, especially when you've got software like blogger.com or wordpress.com. It's very, very simple. It's just literally a question of setting up and registering your name. Uh, writing posts, clicking publish, and it's like they're probably to see. It's very simple. Well, no, people do sometimes have the idea that it is geeky, but it seems to me that an awful lot of women are involved in blogging, and these awards are now in their second year, and they've, they've grown in leaps and bounds. Yeah, they've grown big time. I mean, even the amount of people who are voting this year is unbelievable compared to last year. Yeah, I suppose there are a good few um, women involved. I mean, my own blog is just about music and my own kind of personal adventures, uh, as boring as they might be. But I mean, you can, really can write about anything you want, from your own personal thoughts to politics to music to, you know, reacting to a global event, anything like that. So it's just a great way to kind of pass the time and, and find new information and, and get your voice out there. So when you talk about blogs, you talk about popularity of blogs and you talk about hits and things like that. How do you know if your blog is capturing the imagination or if it's, if it's fueling something out there? Well, I suppose you have your kind of basic hit, hit catches and that kind of thing. But I mean, there's common facilities on it as well, so people can react to what you're publishing yourself, um, you know, whether they disagree with it or agree or have something to add themselves. So um, I suppose recently I was going to change direction on my blog when I put up a post. Uh, a lot of people said, no, don't do it, like Sinead was one of them, so I guess <laughs> that, that's how you, you kind of um, gather information that way. You know you're onto a good thing. Yeah, I mean, it's a massive discussion forum and it's very democratic as well. How many regular visitors were you? Regulars on your site, would you have? Oh, I would say about three or four hundred a day. Right, yeah. three or four hundred a day. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going over yourself, how did you get into blogging? Um, uh, I knew started up a, a website before the blogging software was available uh, called tokensworth.ie and it was really, you know, the equivalent of handcrafting every page. And um, I moved into using the, the WordPress software that uh, Sinead mentioned, and it makes things much easier. And was that like inventing the printing press? Oh, all those, it's, you it's know. the equivalent of between, you know, the, the book of Kells <laughs> and the newspaper. Suddenly you just press publish in a way. Yeah. Yeah. So as far as I'm concerned, I'm not, I don't have a technical background at all. Elves look after how it gets on. <laughs> <laughs> but as long as the elves keep working, I'm happy. Yeah. And what's your, what's your blog about? Um, the blog side of uh, Tuppence work is mostly um, about politics and the media. Um, newspapers in particular and um, we, we try and kind of take a view not in terms of party politics but just as a kind of you know a civic view of politics as a, as a person living in a society how are you going to react to the things that are happening how do you think that the things that you hear in newspapers or on television they don't seem to reflect your opinion and mm -hmm. what you think is important so um, I mean recently that we ran a competition called uh, uh, VoteTube uh, on VoteTube.org uh, looking for people to send in videos about what was important to them. Um, so it could be as easy as going down with your mobile phone and taking it out and taking a video saying why are there old double yellow lines on my road mm -hmm. or um, going down to the local school and showing the queues of people waiting to get into the schools. The world's wide web but all politics is local. It's and there's nothing more that nobody knows better than the people who are actually in an area what are the important things in that area? Well, it's, yeah, exactly. It's not some news editor deciding that's not important, that's not important, we're going to focus on this. Everything today. goes up yeah. and then uh, let people decide what's important about watching it. Do you think sometimes that, you know, that papers are starting to, you know, amongst other media, starting to cotton on to how just how powerful this is and trying to, you know, fight against it? Do you, do you feel that happening? Well, uh, I think the Irish newspapers are still in the stage where they're kind of 
hoping it goes away. <laughs> and uh, I, I mean, I do anticipate that the Irish Blog Awards will probably provoke a sort of a, a little bubble of, of newspaper activity, but I don't anticipate that much of it will be very positive. Because um, you, you, you guys are the competition and scaring, I suppose. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think we're the competition as such, but there was a lot of talk of citizen journalism and that you know yeah. bloggers are taking jobs away from journalism. And um, myself and there are bloggers and journalists, so you, you, you can't do both. But I think a lot of papers aren't utilising blogging to its full potential because you've already got an awful lot of content on your newspaper that you could be, you know, uh, directing at a very specific audience, which they aren't doing by not getting on, you know, getting in touch with the technology of blogging. And it's a real shame that papers can't embrace both. You can limit the media and at the same time. So some journalists are using blogs, just taking full sections and printing it as their, as their own information as well, aren't they? Well, yes, it does have, you're always going to get duplication, I suppose, but I think that new, newspapers, I mean, the lots of The Guardian and the BBC do very, very well. Mm -hmm. It'd be great to see Irish newspapers em embracing the technology because they actually realize, they don't realise how much of their own content they, they, could, they could duplicate and, and direct to different people. And, and also I'd say that um, one of the big problems that newspapers are going to have is they have a generation of people coming up um, who are more used to looking at people for their information or looking at blogs than they are to thinking about buying right, newspaper. Exactly. And if they don't find a way to talk to those people, they're going to have trouble a couple of years down the line. Yeah, believe me, there are editors all over the city that had sleepless nights over this kind of thing. Yeah. Well, there is a resistance to it, but I mean, it's completely possible that everything can coexist. Well, I think with the election coming up, we're going to see you know a massive change in events, that this is going to be the bloggers' the election, block. and people move online to get their information, as well as well, Politicians? Are there politicians going online? Do we have any politicians with blogs in this country? There, there are quite a few. I mean, I think if only there were even more. It's, it's just a shame, as, and I'm sure Simon will probably be championing more politicians. Again, you're talking about a, a, a very, very visible, very audible platform that a lot of people are not utilising. And it's, it's, it's the same arts organisations. A lot of uh, some people have blogged the fact that arts organisations aren't using blogs to kind of hit more people and make people aware of what they're doing. And if that goes for most organisations, go to politicians. So I'm listening to the point that the people who would be on blogs are not the people who vote. I think the, the people who are on blogs at the moment are the people who could vote if they were felt that there was a reason to do so. I do feel that um, um, when we've been running the VoteTube competition that they have been there has been people who wouldn't otherwise have thought of politics and been relevant to them because they would only see it as party politics. And these days they see it as um, um, issues that matter to them. You know, if they can't get to work. Uh, they realise that the reason they can't get to work is decisions were taken that might make traffic difficult to, to get through. I mean, the, the big area that blogs are most likely to have an impact on is the commuter belt around Dublin. Mm -hmm. And that's the very place that political um, parties find hardest to canvas. Mm -hmm. They don't have the people who are there during the day to knock, knock on the door. And then if people have come home after a long commute, the last thing they want is to be interrupted by someone telling them what they want to, uh, <laughs> how they want to vote. But this do people become famous through blogs as well? I mean, we have kind of um, uh, minor celebrities in Ireland that have set up their own blogs. And uh, can you tell us yeah, about well, I suppose the biggest one at the moment is Blagara, which is um, based in New York. I know they're fans of the show themselves. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but that's kind of a irreverent, gossipy kind yeah. of thing. And um, someone like 20 Major um, is a fantastic blogger. No one knows 20. Yeah, what does he do? Uh, <laughs> this, I mean, no one knows who 20 is, and it's fantastic commentary. And there's loads of people out there. So it just goes to show that when, you know, when people get down and start publishing themselves, you know, great results. Can so how do you stay on this? I think you can. I mean, we're all hoping he'll show up for the award because he's nominated. But uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, that's part of the thing as well. It's anonymous, so if people are concerned about maybe, you know, conflict of interest or about what they do for a living, they can stay on. All right, well, guys, best of luck in the uh, for your nominations, and I hope you all get your awards. Okay. And uh, thank you very much for coming and talking to us about it. Coming up tomorrow, we'll be talking about.